Say it ain't so. <laughs> I uh, got another. I haven't even finished working on the uh, video from the F-150 with the radiator replacement and using this tool and setup and everything to diagnose it. And haven't finished the tractor video from a lot of ballast work uh, moving a road, but on the way there, overheated, pulled over, cooled down, went to normal. I ended up having a boil over at one point, made it back. I kept checking fluids, letting it cool down, just stop for a while, uh, refill. But I, you know, I have to say, I'd love to say that every single time I do a, uh, a vehicle check before I go out on a mission, you know, take a tow in something somewhere. But due to the fire the day before, fatigue got up, and man, I'm just trying to move my legs one in front of the other. And I did not get home in time late at night to actually check all the fluids I just took off. So I am hoping that the best case scenario is it was low uh, for, for whatever reason, which there's going to be a reason it's low. But then I, uh, you know, got it back home here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going through a vacuum fill uh, to make sure I don't I get all the air pockets out. Uh, one of the symptoms with this too, besides the boil over temperature icon coming on, uh, no real power loss until you know the fan would kick on and all that. I haven't assessed the fan clutch over here. You know, there's a lot. Of, it could be oil cooler. It could be low fluid. It could be fan clutch sensors. Blah, all kinds of stuff. But I think the best route for me right now is just to do a vacuum fill, get it up, and then I'm going to do a pressure test on the system. Keep looking around, see if I have a leak. So I really want to answer first: Why am I losing it? I don't have contamination of oil in the degas bottle or in the coolant, and I don't have coolant in the. Uh, uh, I want to say in the oil so that's good so maybe not a head gasket but I haven't done a bubble test to see if we're getting compression gases up here but um, here in a second I'll just explain how this tool works if you have never used one okay so I'll th see if I can explain this thing so if you bought one of these tools you're going like I have no which idea which way to hook this thing up um, so let me give it an overview the green hose up here is my compressed air line this is an on off switch right here uh, when you have this valve closed it's going to pull, it's actually going to blow by here and create a venturi effect, or it wants to. So the air is going to come through this tube that is just down here. In fact, I'll get it tied off somewhere else there, but it's going straight through here while this is off. So what this is designed to do is do a venturi effect, speed of air, Bernoulli's principle and all that good stuff. Um, but as soon as I turn this valve right here and turn it on, then that venturi effect passing through here draws and creates a vacuum right here so what it should do right away when this is turned on with this open so that the air is flowing you should be drawing a vacuum on this line to the proper cap that you put on whatever degas whatever system you got or whatever you're doing with it so that's going to draw a vacuum down um, and you can look on your cap let me get this one here and it says you know 16 psi I'm going to draw a vacuum actually almost opposite of that, probably up about 13 or 14. Um, and then I'm going to quickly turn this off. So I want to keep the vacuum pressure inside this whole system. The radiator, the hoses, heater core, everything should be at a vacuum stage. Now the last connection down here is off right now. Uh, Inline is flow, offline is not flow. Uh, but this is going down to my coolant with a pickup tube at the bottom. So now that there's a vacuum in the blue line, this is closed off. Then as soon as I open this valve, that vacuum is gonna to wanna to equalize and it's gonna suck up the coolant through this line and into the system. So as it's happening, what's gonna happen is the fluid would be pulled in here. And actually this first run I did of this, it pulled almost the whole gallon with one vacuum pull, uh, but it's gonna be filling this thing up at the same time with the lower atmospheric pressure the pressure that it's trying to create in there it's going to pull bubbles that'll want to equalize and get up to that space up there so you're pour, pulling some of the uh, little air gaps air bubbles uh, pockets out of there hopefully all of them we're going to see how this goes but then i know that if the pockets are gone i can do a compression test or a pressure test and then maybe look around for some leaks and find out where this leak is at uh, i think i'll get some coffee first and then i'll demo it all right, I'm gonna just go ahead and open this up at the very beginning. We're just gonna go ahead and start pulling a vacuum. So this on off, and it's gonna allow the venturi to pull. We should see this going down. Well, it'll look like it's going up, but it's actually negative pressure. So 
that we're drawing back in. And this is closed. And shutting off the air, so sealing this off. Now we're just gonna open this up and the vacuum should pull this. Now do not freak out at this yellow that's in here. Uh, we've checked specs on this. Uh, I've switched to this for the last couple of times. Uh, but whatever's getting ready to happen now, I'll probably go back to orange. Uh, yeah, there's lots of articles <laughs> throwing all this stuff, but and what's in it and uh, what it could have fact on different metals, but everything turned up that this particular stuff was okay. So let's let the vacuum pull up. So you can hear it filling up, and I'm actually seeing the level right here. So in a little bit, this uh, degas line that's really coming from the engine, top of radiator, and so on. Once this level gets up here, you'll probably can kind of see some bubbles that will start pulling up here because it's they're wanting to equalize and come up. Uh, but once this has been used, this gallon right here, I'll just turn that off um, and get ready, let it drain back out and get ready for the next one. All right, I've gotten it up pretty much to level, but now it's you know started to go down because I don't know if we can see here in a little bit, but you will get some uh, bubbles. Hang on a second, I'm going to... Yeah, we're not pulling the vacuum this time for some reason. There we go. Now you see those bubbles? That is because of the vacuum that we're pulling. So we're just going to keep doing this for a while and get every bit of that out. Okay, I've got good news and bad news. <laughs> well, actually, I'm going to call it, call it good news. Um, finished with the vacuum fill system to where I'm still getting some air bubbles out, but I had done so much. The system's pretty much, I'm going to say, full. Uh, now you can see it's lower if you can see that mark. These, I hate these tanks anyway, these degas bottles on a 6.4, but I've switched over to a pressure test. That's what I want to do is get the system full and then do a pressure test so I can see where is this thing leaking from, if it is, and it sure enough is. I already did one, one test on it. I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to pump it up with pressure and then I'm going to grab the phone and we'll go underneath. I don't know exactly where it's coming from yet. Um, I've got the flashlight ready. And maybe I clip that in my pocket here. All right, let's pump this thing up. Well, it's coming down to the lower hose. I can't quite, boy, there's a nice stream there, but I don't want to get my eyes right under it. Where is that come from? Okay. All right, we're going to go back up top again and look. All right, from this angle, I probably can't see much, but I'm seeing something a little more towards the front. Uh, it's at that EGR cooler. So we can get another angle. All right, we're up in that area there. So I've turned the left front wheel. So it's right in there somewhere. It looks like it's time to get rid of the uh, looks like it's time to get rid of the fender flare here, so we can get in and access this thing. Well, I don't know if you can see the way I'm holding this, but it is the EGR cooler. So there is a crack at the base, and that's where everything's coming out at. Ugh. Well, we know what to do then. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to start working on it. Um, just probably saw on the video before, yesterday or the day before, uh, assessing everything. Definitely found the leak in the, uh, this will be in the EGR cooler. See that one down at the base of that piece right there is where the leak is coming from. And, you know, just thinking about it, I thought I'm suspicious of the water pump as well because I didn't have cold air even during a refill. And, of course, there could be air 
but I'm just thinking at the miles on the truck, I think maybe close to 160,000. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the water pump because I'm going to be in that area anyway. Um, it's going to be easier to take this out um, if I go through the process of removing the fan shroud. Um, I've got the pneumatic uh, clutch fan tool uh, borrowed from my friend Colton. And so I'm going to pull this out, uh, pull the fan off, all that change the water pump. But as that's out, I'm going to go ahead and move on to this so I can get more room. But I'm going to have to get uh, the coolant system drained, battery out of here, degas bottle out of here, stuff out of the way, get the wheel off so I can work up in there on the bottom of the EGR and the connections. I have the uh, updated hose. You'll see that, you know, this has the black end, I think the new one. And I've had that, that new hose for quite a while, and I just carried it on the truck in case something happened on the way. Um, I got it, but since I'm doing all this now, I haven't had a problem with this hose, but I'm going to go ahead and change it out. So it's all going to come off. Uh, this will have to get removed a little bit, but I'm going to film what I can here and there, but I got to get to work. I can't spend too much filming, uh, time filming this because uh, I'm blessed with wonderful weather right now. I mean, it's nice out there, um, but something could be turning quick. I got to get ready to plow, pull. I've got a job that's kind of been waiting on me. Um, so let me get to uninstalling and then we'll start back again there. Good deal. Um, while I was just starting to prep, I've got the truck jacked up and uh, got the fender well out, tire off, just getting ready to take batteries out still. Some of it, uh, FedEx, not FedEx, UPS, just delivered this baby new water pump. And if you all that know anything about water pumps, this is not from Advanced Auto Parts, believe me. <laughs> uh, this is a billeted, it's been machined for the impeller. And being a firefighter, seeing these type of veins on a pump makes me a lot happier than little metal blades that are turned a little bit and, and even the composite material that's on OEM and some other stuff. All right, just an update at this stage. Battery out on the uh, driver's side, battery out on the right side. Those are inside the shop. Uh, this one is on a charger. Uh, it shouldn't take long to charge it up to full. As soon as I see that it's full, I'll switch it over to the other one. I'm just going to keep them nice and tasty until we're ready to put things back in. Uh, this shouldn't take that long for that to worry about one of those draining or something, but uh, it's just a good habit, I think, to put them on, uh, put them on the charge. But um, of all the stuff I see, it's so nice to look down and see that shiny bolt down there, right there at the end of my fingertip, from the last job on the valve cover, fuel bracket, all that jazz. Um, phew, that was a job. But uh, you got the degas bottle out, and the battery box is attached to that. I believe it's 13 or 14 millimeter, four of them in the box. Then you've got this hose that's connected to the degas bottle. And let me see here. Now I've already put it in the box over here with the degas bottle, but you've got the wire clip. Um, it's holding that in. There's a vacuum tank underneath the degas bottle uh, with a vacuum line to that. I do have some vacuum stuff I need to fix on this as well to get the auto locking hubs back, but that's another day. Um, but right now what I've done is I've actually unhooked the, uh, the pipe here, get that out of the way here in a little bit, but I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and unhook from the fuel cooler. That's unhooked so I could pull those back and it was easier to get into this small uh, clip that's on there to get that one disconnected. Pull that out and now we have the upper radiator hose disconnected. And I'll show you, it was not budging, so I'm grabbing a tool here to show you what I used. Uh, set it here, it's probably gonna fall. <laughs> um, yep, yep, that part went, oh, it's about to fall. Um, but what it is, I used the back side of this punch, just on the corner of it a little bit, lifted up this wiring harness in front, and tapped it with a very small screwdriver or not a screwdriver, hammer. <laughs> I'm tired. All right, a little bit frustrated. Oh, ugh. All right, I did a post on Facebook about, you know, I've got gravel down here, and every time I crawl under to do anything under any vehicle, um, I've got gravel in my back. Very frustrating. I'm so ready for, for concrete to be here to work on. But anyway, um, just tap that lightly, and it drove it back enough that I could start the wiggle, and that worked quite well. And now I am working the uh, other end, which is just stupid down in there. 
you can see the wire retainer clip, but here's the upper retainer clip. Um, so the same one, basically, you can see I have gotten loose uh, down there, and I'm getting ready to pull it out. And I use um, a nice pick. So I finally got a decent pick set like this um, that can kind of hook in there and be able to pull it out a little bit, and that's what helped with that. But that's where we're at now. I'm getting ready to take upper radiator hose out of the way. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and loosen this up for the power steering fluid reservoir. I want to go ahead and get this line out of here for the uh, cooler for the air because I have a feeling um, the bat the bottom looks kind of bad. I don't know if that's from moisture or something, but I want to take a close inspection of that pipe there. And plus, this is the connection in another video. I was going to go do some uh, uh, bush hogging in, in a county with my pastor. And this is the boot over here that came loose. So this would be a good opportunity when I assemble things. I'm going to take some degreaser, wipe clean, wipe clean, wipe clean. And I've also heard of people saying, like, put a little bit of hairspray or something like that tacky on that before you connect that back. But I'm going to just really look at these boots uh, a little bit. I may go ahead and replace those. I'm not sure. We'll check on that. But uh, next step, disassemble, disassemble. Uh, took out the air filter and the, the box for it. Uh, I've taken apart the uh, air lines here, the vacuum lines. This is, I believe this is the uh, solenoid or the switch for the four-wheel drive, which is that, that's what I need to repair. There's another line missing somewhere in the system that i got to work on. But um, this disconnected. We've taken the uh, vacuum line that runs across the top here. Both of these ran across here. Uh, but these are kind of fragile, so I'm um, using the, uh, you know, puller tool. In fact, be gentle with it. Don't use a screwdriver, especially on the uh, vacuum lines. Uh, disconnecting here, here, getting more stuff out of the way, and I'm getting ready to use the 8 millimeter and take this out there, and there should be two at the bottom of this, this part right here and get that out of the way and we could should be able to see a lot more i think all right so i'm on the uh, passenger side of the upper fran shroud and the bolt is not there on the lower part the two upper ones were here well actually one of them was up here and one was broken or the plastic part uh, where that bolt should be is broken but the lower one on this side is not here but the driver side is so this is kind of telling me somebody's been in here before. I don't know if it's been a water pump or something else before, but someone's been on this before, which is, yeah, it just gives me a little more indication of history. So that's okay. All right, so the upper fan shroud is off. So I can start to get some more room. Once we get this shroud with the fan off, we're going to have a lot more room for the EGR cooler, everything else going on. But I got a good peek. Bear with me as I try to hold this in a place where you can see it. Um, I'm going to try to pinch the zoom with my left hand, but okay, hold still. Oh, look at the condition of that belt. <laughs> it is uh, cracked, so that is going to be one of the things that uh, I'm going to order the boots, new springs. All new boots um, for the CAC and order a new serpentine belt as well. I'm going to find things along the way, but I'm going to get them and uh, get them tomorrow here one way or another. So I can just keep moving with everything. That'll be one of the last things that goes on, but still it'll be nicer to have it when I start to reassemble everything. But uh, necessity. So what I love about these certain types of jobs that are in-depth, um, considered a blessing because we find more things that we didn't know about and couldn't see from another angle, so that's cool. <laughs> All right. So what I'm gonna try to do is actually not remove the fan shroud because of all that. Uh, I can't even get to the connection down there the two little uh i can't even remember what you call them right now but they're holding in the bottom i can't even see those on the bottom so i can't get my tool on them uh, but i think what i'm going to do is since this has some room to move for the radiator 
I'm going to go ahead and get the tool on that. No, that's not focusing. Let's try it from another angle. Yeah, a little bit better. Um, I'm going to get the tool on that and get the fan loosened up. And once I pull the, the radiator out some, I'm going to see if I can clear the fan shroud. Somebody else right now may be going, nope, won't work. I tried it, but that's what I'm going to try. And I don't know if I missed this on one of the videos there, uh, the clips, because I was squeezing the phone and it come off. But this uh, fan clutch harness, this just slides in a connection right here on the back side of the fan shroud. You'll squeeze those two together and it'll just slide out, but it's going to stay with the fan. All right, little interruption. Um, I got that was leaning down in, and this is one of the jackets uh, that I hadn't actually wore in a while. And it's going to actually save one of these for a safety video for a lot of things around machinery, tractors, and so on. But any sweatshirts that you have or coats that have these things on them, I absolutely want to get rid of them. Um, even right now, I'm dangling. And even if I don't get it caught up in a machinery spinning like my PTO shaft or some other moving piece of machinery, I end up catching this on some engine as I'm starting to pull back and then end up causing myself to fall or something like that. So these things are honestly just stupid. So before I move on, grabbing the other one and getting rid of that uh, neck strangler, uh, <laughs> whatever thing that's gonna get caught and everything. So that thing is gone. Anyway, safety stop there for a second. All right, before I use this, I'll show the uh, tool. Actually, I borrowed from Colton. I was on the way out to go pick up a set to have to do this because I've wrestled with the, uh, I've got the other uh, fan removal tools for the 5.7 and just, you know, general one, but from everything read, it's not going to work with this well. So uh, as manual says, this is supposed to be an inch and seven eighths on the nut on the fan clutch. Uh, we'll see if that's actually the case, but how this thing works. Now this is on the 6.4, it is a left-handed thread. So if I picture on the front of the fan clutch, or if I say the front of the motor, it, it's almost like you're actually going to be turning a nut on to the engine. The way you would put one on is the way it's actually going to be coming off. So that's a left-handed thread. So we're going to be trying to rotate it this direction to actually take it off instead of on. So how that's going to break in the beginning is one of these. I'll get this on there at the right angle that I can get the gun in. This piece will go in there. And then on the end will be the pneumatic gun. So it's going to be driving force to turn that nut uh, on there. Uh, I'm leaving the serpentine belt on because that should give a little bit of hold and there's not a lot of room. So we'll, it's my first time using one of these, but it certainly makes sense and I'm excited to try it versus my crescent wrench and the other tool I've had and everything else. All right, kind of obvious. I'm not going to be able to get the camera in here to show this turning while I'm putting it on, but the... The nut part of the tool is on there and it's the correct size. So it is an inch and seven eighth. And then I've picked an angle. You can see the crook of that tool there to the right. So I've picked that turn so that I should have a direction down in here with the uh, pneumatic tool to get on that. And we'll check it out. <laughs> that worked that easy. That's just too awesome. Highly recommend that tool. All right, uh, I may be all over the place, just kind of back and forth doing what I want next since I'm kind of doing three things. Um, water pump, fixing the issue with the cracked EGR cooler, and going to go ahead and do the thermostat. It's right down in there. Obviously, it would be a pain without it. But uh, a few things to get out of the way. This is the hose that was going up to the degas bottle. I just moved the retainer clip back on it. Going to pull it off, get it out of the way. Um, get the hose that goes between the horizontal and the vertical part of the EGR cooler. I'm going to get that out of the way. And as soon as that's out of the way, I'll start working on the bolts at the back. I did spray those last night. And uh, I've already got these band clamps up here. 
loosened up. We'll do those and see this. And I may get bored with that and go back to the other part, but I think that's okay. <laughs> All right, this is the uh, bracket for the vertical EGR part of the cooler, uh, which is going up to the EGR valve right there. But this should have four bolts in it. It did not have an upper bolt here. There wasn't anything in that, which for me right now, that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, this nut, or she's been, you can see the nut, but this is a mounting bolt and a bracket holder. So the power steering hose comes up through a bracket that's held here and goes up to the power steering pump. And it was really a pain because I couldn't get the uh, socket onto here. Couldn't even hardly feel it because the hose was resting so much on it. So I'd say when they put it back on, it was twisted in a way and not quite the way it was originally mounted, but what I had to do was take this screwdriver, get under that uh, power steering hose, pry up on it to give me the space to get the socket on that, and then it you know turned out fine. And there was one bolt on the bottom part, and I think I can't remember whether it was the the blower or this, but one of those bolts was missing. But it came out easy. Uh, but this was a 10 millimeter, and I would suspect that this one was a 10 millimeter as well. Uh, or it was a much longer bolt out to the outside surface. I'm not sure. Probably that. But this one was a 13. Okay, now that the vertical EGR cooler is out and the bracket, take a look at how much room we have. If you've done this job before, you'll know how nice this is right now because that is the thermostat housing. So you've got two thermostats. It's really hard to point and do this. One, two thermostats in there. So that housing... Uh, there are two of them in there so if you get a kit it should come with two thermostats different temperature um and then the uh, the gasket that's going around uh, that seating there thing there but now that's going to be a lot easier to get to last time i really had to loosen some stuff on that upper corner had to use like two wobble heads and loosen a fuel line and it was just stupid but now it looks like i'm gonna have better access for that so i'm gonna go on to work and uh try to get the lower excuse me the horizontal uh, cooler out down there and see if that's going to want to come out or whether I have to encourage it. All right, we're working on the uh, the horizontal part of the EGR cooler. Uh, at the very back, which I can't point with this light, at the very back of it, uh, it took a little persuasion to get that out. It's a 10 millimeter at the back, uh, hooking it right where the uh, EBP sensor hooks in, right in front of that, taking those two out. Got one loosened up. I'm going to wait uh, just a minute to take the rest of it out. It's not a lot of room uh, because we've also got this hose. Let's see if I can point right here. That hose, I've got the light, not hose, but this is metal that's hooking in there. And that is traveling back to connect to the EGR cooler back in there. So if you see the multicolor wire right there, Look up and just to the left of that a little bit, and you'll see where it's hooking onto a hose there. I need to get that disconnected. Uh, and then we have the two bracket holders uh, for the horizontal one that we got to take out. Uh, so let me just work on that for a little bit. Oh, let me uh, mention here too, while it was in, I could not get to this inside hook on the flange that turns up to the vertical cooler. Um, and I'd heard about somebody doing this. I got the, the outside one loosened, but there's any angle I would use. I couldn't get leverage on the wrench, so I cut it. That'll get replaced. All right, so I decided to take out the uh, Y pipe that's here that split off, and then the uh, degas bottle connection was hooked to that, and then you've got the uh, heater core, I guess, is up there. Um, but uh, I did that because go ahead and get it out of room for the horizontal EGR cooler to give it some of the rotation room getting up out of there. Uh, but since I'm leaving a hole right there right now, I don't want anything to drop in that hole exactly. So <laughs> I'm just going to stuff a uh, paper towel down in there really good just to keep something from falling like a screw, a nut, rust, whatever. Um, but we're getting close to pulling the horizontal one off. All right. Well, this uh, this stupid thing is out. <laughs> that, was a, that was a pain, honestly. Um, most of the problem was this other hose connection here. I ended up cutting the hose in between the two connections when uh, the other hard hose runs underneath it. And uh, that allowed me to start moving. Then I could get up and get a screwdriver on it and actually get the hose pulled off. But 
uh, I pulled up the brackets or the holding clamps as good as I could. Got it over top of the dipstick. Of course, the dipstick is loose. I did take the nut out of the steering column, uh, you know, the rod, but I didn't end up having to actually take it loose. But what happened was I finally got this end up more than the other end. Kind of got it rotated out of there. And then once it came up, I actually ended up rotating it this way. And that's what cleared that lower hose barb from around the steering uh, column and the stuff down there. So got a rotation and then got up to a point where I'm still holding on to the clamps a little bit. They're kind of being really stubborn with it, uh, but they are part of the mounting bracket. So I couldn't cut them off or do anything like that. So uh, really just had to force it. And there at the end, it was more a little, a little bit more grunting than anything mechanical. Uh, but absolute pain. Um, here in a second, I'll show you the... Uh, upper EGR cooler and point to where that crack was at. Okay, here is the uh, upper or vertical part of the EGR and the crack when I did the pressure test was coming right along the base of this weld right there for this putting on there. I'm not sure. You can't really tell it. You can't really see that well. I think you can barely see the line. Just barely, and it's not showing up until I pressurize it. So sitting still, it was not leaking, but when it gets pressurized, you start losing. Um, or you start, let's say, towing a tractor up a hill, a steep hill for a long way, and pressure builds. That's when this started showing up. Um, yeah, I wish you could see it a little bit better, but that's just some evidence. You, you really need a pressure test to see what's doing it because this looks fine. But it is retaining some moisture right around that crack. Um, it's kind of hard to see that it's darker there, but that is actually some moisture. So that piece is bad. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna JB weld that. <laughs> All right, I just got the uh serpentine belt off, ratchet right in here, and boy, this is so nice with a fan out of there versus when I had to change out the alternator before. Um I can just reach down there and get to this and then uh sliding it off the pulley down here really easily. All right now we're gonna get the pulley right here off of the water pump uh, it's got four 10 millimeter in the front of it so i'm gonna go ahead and get that off and i may have to tap a little bit with a hammer if it's uh rusted to it a little bit but i'll just go ahead and whack it forgot to mention i've already got one of the bolts out of the pulley but just stick a screwdriver down into one of these mini holes and i've got it between this idler well, i hope that sounds from the screwdriver yeah, should be. <laughs> and the uh, power steering pump up here. But it seems like it's it's going to end up going on that. Now I'll assemble this on the water pump before I put it back in. <sighs> Taking a breather for a second here, but uh, some good and bad news again. But I think I was right on thinking about the uh, not the thermostat. And yeah, there's a cracked EGR cooler, but it may have been an after effect. So I went ahead and ordered that pump that I had showed you earlier. And I'm sure I'm glad that I did because, ba bam, <laughs> it is destroyed. Plastic. That's just junk, man. Yep, it is just absolutely destroyed. So, this is what was pumping. Well, not pumping. <laughs> but, yeah, just eat all two pieces, destroyed. Uh, so this means that I'm probably going to go through a flushing process. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble, uh, the connection down here to the horizontal EGR cooler. Uh, we're going to check everything and do a major flush before I even put the pump back in. And, uh, I hope a piece didn't make it up in. Hopefully it was maybe a, a sudden catastrophic boom and it's gone and then the, it really stopped the flow. Uh, before stuff carried up to the cooler and other stuff in it so a little bit of fingers crossed putting everything back together but it's uh, getting close to a just thorough internal rinse process now, one of the things i decided to do is just kind of wonder was there any major chunks you know that made it somewhere else i thought well let's just do some deduction here so i actually reassembled uh, the fan in pieces it, it would make a great app you know for your phone or something to assemble blown up water pump parts but it is together for the main pieces and 
I also found all the pieces that are the impellers that are missing. They all match. I don't see any chunks. Uh, there may be some very small fine stuff that has come off, but it looked like every, it just went boom and everything just sat there in the bottom of the casing. So fortunate about that. But comparing this plastic, you know, junk here to this fine looking specimen right there, um, this was not cheap. I think with the quick shipping, it was almost $400. Ugh. It's hard to pay, but look at that. I mean, that's machined. Um, so this should last for quite some time and uh, not give me any trouble. I hope so. Um, but I'll get ready to put the bell housing back on it uh, for the for the pulley. And I'm going to put them on there, but I'm going to have to tighten them up, uh, this on there, when I get it back in so I can put the screwdriver in and have some force against it to really tighten it down. Doesn't she look beautiful? How about them apples there? Uh, got all the bolts back in, and they're just down. Not seated yet, but just a turn probably before on each one. So I'm going to turn to the hand wrench, to the ratchet, and I'm going to go corner to corner, kind of in a star, top, bottom left, upper right, left, something like that, just kind of like a tire. Um, to, we're down to the point we want to seat the gasket evenly. So I want to go around kind of in some pressure. So after I do that one time and just barely feel it pressing down, I'll start going around in a circle and make sure she seats right. All right, so the uh, new thermostats are back in. In fact, the other ones weren't that old, but I just, I really wanted to see inside of that housing, make sure there wasn't a piece from uh, any of that other stuff in there. But uh, it's still... It's great to be able to get to these. Uh, it is a eight millimeter. And then the bottom right one isn't bad, but it's still a little bit of a pain. But that one back there is still a pain. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> uh, the last time with the uh, the vertical EGR cooler, I ended up having to take the fuel line loose here to get it out of the way. Um, but I ended up using a quarter inch racket, ratchet, eight millimeter on it. And it's just a pain. You can't really get your fingers from any direction, the other side, this side, left or right hand, or really hardly even turn that to get it out. But eventually that's done. All right, it is late in the day. I've been at this all day and I'm tired and I've got church tonight. So I'm gonna take a break, uh, wash up a little bit, grab something to eat, and then I have some orders ready um, to part store. Uh, this has worked out super well. Um, feels good. There's many times that I came back into the fins, so I'm glad that my dad suggested that. That's a good idea. Um, have not tightened these up yet, but the bolts are in. Housing's on. I've got to go pick up a new serpentine belt. And while I was at it, I happened to remember to check these, and this one is so stiff. Uh, that one, see, that's that one's good. It's a little bit of sound, but it's it's okay, I think. Well, actually a little bit of wobble, but this one, boy, it's season up. So oh, I just added an order on for that, but also ordered the coolant, everything with it. Uh, what else today? Because I'm going to end the video here shortly just to put this together some other time. But um, I've got to clean the oil out of these boots so that those are not going to pop off again like in one video you might have seen. Uh, and what's going on with the EGR cooler? Well... We'll see later, um, but I'm getting ready to move on to some flushing. I uh, got the new fluid and then start reassembling some things, but uh, I want to look at some other issues on the EGR and deal with that maybe a little bit later. But yeah, it's going to be it. Most of this is just assembly coming back, and uh, I hope you learned something. Gosh, send me a comment down there uh, if there's something I might be able to tell you about this truck or something I've been through with it. Uh, I don't. I should have probably mentioned all of the. Uh, yeah, I have to remember to put that steering column bolt back in and hook up that wire harness and all kinds of little stuff to do still. But yeah, if you think of something about this truck you're curious about, and now of course getting down in the front of it, I can already tell. I think this motor was replaced uh, before I bought this truck, um, especially with bolts missing and all that. But uh, one thing I didn't mention, you see me wear these gloves a lot now. 
man i love these things these are ninja uh, ninja light um sam johnson up in australia he actually showed these to me and got some and man these things you actually can do things with them i mean you can tactile like small bolts and feeling with it and gives me some protection from oil on my hands plus keeps them warm on a cool morning i use these when i'm chaining down the traco just keeping all the gunk off the hands all the rust but man i just got used to wearing these and they breathe a little bit on the back uh, so you're not sweating like with rubber gloves on so fantastic but i hope i hope nobody's disappointed this is where we're stopping but most of this is just reassembly on stuff um and i have a feeling it's going to do fine uh, i will probably do a test run next day or two and see how it does but y'all take care have a blessed day if you um hadn't had supper go get some i'm gonna do that too take care uh, i was at an end stage and doing a pressure test on the coolant system before i waste coolant in it and it failed <laughs> so found the leak down at this see if we can get you can see that bolt right down there there's a plastic pipe coming out of that port it's running here back under all that and then it's going back to a heater core connection right there to the left of the tape or below the tape uh, so that is one piece and there's a lot that you would actually have to take out now i've got the egr off and the cool uh, vertical cooler and all that right now back off because i'm still waiting to fix the crack but i just want to go ahead and test the rest of the system but i went ahead and took uh the block plate off for this right now that was just protecting and stuff rag in there while i'm working there's a lot this might have to come out of the way but this is one piece that you got to kind of work out of there um and i did not like the thought of buying that piece and it being plastic and in hot temperature or relatively hot temperature like the engine and the coolant uh because obviously it's easy to crack or prone to crack so uh, instead of having to take that whole thing out as one piece and maybe break the new one going back in we've got a kit <laughs> Let's bring this over. Where you saw that bolt connected, this will go in its place in the port with the gasket. The bolt will go back through there. Then you've got a barb fitting, not really barb, but straight fitting where this higher, much higher quality silicone hose is going to go in place of it, which means I can route it. You could route this and bend it through this system. You could probably even you know, remove the bolt here and cut that or whatever just to get it out of there because it really doesn't matter at that point. Uh, but this kit was 150 bucks, and it was kind of hard to swallow, but that's really what you pay for a little more specialty plus quality pieces that are going back in compared to what OEM was. So, I mean, this is not cheap hose. You can't go down and get some Amazon uh, rubber hose from somewhere and it's going to last the way i'm wanting this thing to last and have this port here machined and blah 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 so yeah it, it costs a little bit this is from no limit fabrications uh, made for this application and i purchased it through xdp diesel um i'm not sure if i'm saying that right i know it's xdp but I, that's where i ordered the water pump from uh, ordered this through them and a couple other things and They've been really great to deal with. I tried to order this on a weekend when I discovered the problem. And when I ordered it, I hit PayPal. <laughs> and it did not go on to give me the shipping options where I wanted overnight, um, next day air. And uh, so I had to send an email and all that. But Monday morning when you know support is open, man, they were right on it. Um, canceled the other thing. We got the other stuff going next day air. But it is sold. The same thing is sold by a lot of the diesel stores from this company no limit fabrications um but i got it and i'm happy i'm just going to go ahead and start getting it on and we'll see how this works
All right, so I already made an assumption with the kit. You saw the barb, uh, the metal piece, and then you've got one long piece of silica and hose. I actually kind of thought that at some point, as it comes underneath there and then makes a turn uh, right here where you can see the fitting. I've already got the uh, clamp off and set back, but then it was like, well, wait a minute, where's this silicone hose in the kit supposed to hook to? And there really is nowhere, you know, if you had a double male barb, you could cut somewhere in one of these lines and hook it to it. But this means that it looks like the connection is back on the heater core. So I'm going to have to remove that, uh, or the should the the piece that goes through the firewall. So I'm going to, have to remove it from there, and I guess that's where I'm going to hook it. It's going to be a pain to put the clamp back there, but not worse than anything else we've done. But I did go back to the website uh, uh, for them, and there's there's no instructions on it. I checked a few of the manufacturers, the the resellers, and really nothing there, just the copy and paste kind of direction. So maybe this will help somebody else. But I'm going to get the whole piece out all the way to the firewall connection. Little update, of course, everything's a little bit harder than we'll, <laughs> every time you think it is. But uh, the way this thing was in here, I pointed out before, you've got a bolt down at the bottom holding it in. You've got a nut right there on a post holding that in place. But there's also a third one back here where it makes its turn. But what I went ahead and did is went ahead and cut the hose off the kit, the fitting there, so that I can get into it and actually get that released. I couldn't get the tool on it either way. Went in and disconnected the electronics, wire tied some of that up out of the way, give me some working space. And as you can probably see, th I mean, this thing's not going to come out without removing every bit of all this other stuff. And so I just cut the pipe right there with the recip saw, uh, just checking the stroke, making sure that you're not going too far with it. But I don't care about this piece of plastic, and the other piece is just going to be able to run through there. So. Just an update, of course, it's more to it than you think. All right, so next, if you can see down in there, this is the base that was snapped off in the port. And of course, the other piece come out, that's where the crack was at, this whole piece here. But what I'm gonna do is take another, one of the strong paper towels. I mean, these paper towels will not rip. I'm gonna stuff it down in the hole, one piece, because as I take this out, I have a feeling it's going to break up into pieces. And obviously, after all the other work, I don't want the pieces falling down in a hole. So we'll see if we can extract this in, uh, I don't know, 130 or less pieces. We'll see. <laughs> all right, so this is all the pieces that come out. This is the port I was just talking about um, where it went down. And that's, this is where the fracture was coming up along the front, going along the top of the engine, and then back... Uh, this is the tab that was held down by a nut, and then it's making the turn over towards the water or the heater core. Sorry, it's a little bit cold. It's probably about 32, 33 degrees. Um, so plastic does that a little bit more, but I'll tell you, this was just ridiculous. I just decided to go ahead and I sawed this front part, controlled stroke, slow, uh, and then ended up reaching back at an angle, um, checked with the mirror underneath. Wire tied some other wires back and just cut that slowly at an angle just to get it out in pieces. And all that worked well, but it was still work getting this thing out. But let's just take a look at this plastic. I don't know if I can do this while it's on uh, while it's on camera here, but I mean it was already fractured, but the inside of that is deteriorated as plastic. Um, I don't know if that'll smash and that's holding there but man it's just uh well that stuff just come apart it, it is very brittle um that's why this thing fails and i would even say this i hate to throw this on top of a uh, right in the middle of this video but if this hasn't happened to you yet and you have the money to say i want to improve my 6.4 i would just buy one of these kits and then when it happens there it is you've got the thing already there instead of having to wait on shipping or something but just a thought all right paper towels in uh, in place as a blocker. Uh, boy, I can't get focused here, and I will start picking. Well, actually, this part went better than I expected. Of course, I figured the ear was going to snap off. I used this screwdriver to try to shim. I didn't figure it's all going to come out as one piece. In fact, I figured it'd be more brittle than this, but the ear snapped off. But I was able to get inside the hole. See if I can lay this down there. It was like this. I was able to get to one side opposite from the most that it was that was extracted out got under there and with a little pry on the edge it started coming up as a piece and 
all come out. So I'll take the uh, paper towel out and we're going to carry on. I say that a lot, but sometimes you just keep trudging through. <laughs> well, uh, the next issue, <laughs> the uh, block off plate right here. Yep, it's not clearing that well. Um, in fact, with the uh, OD of the hose, uh, it is it should have had a little bit of a cant on it, I would say, uh, in the machining, which would be hard to do. It's just not a circular part then. But uh, I think with the silicone and its flexibility, I can get it around there. I'll go ahead and get the uh, spring clamp or the clamp around at the base and then start getting the hose on there so I don't have to try to feed it over in a tight space on a turn a little bit. But I'll see if I can get this in place. Okay, it's in. You can see I've got a different sleeve than the other shots and I'm breathing a little bit heavier. <laughs> that was a battle. Uh, what an absolute pain. It should be so much simpler, but uh, you know, the manufacturer of this part was not the same manufacturer as the other part over here. So just a thought, uh, you may want to grind a little bit of that other plate off or something like that to get it in there. But what worked best, I finally ended up spraying a little bit of silicone on the inside of the, in the ID of this pipe. And I came from a front angle, pushing it on and then starting to get it down. You're not going to get it from the top. So... That part's on, I just got a hand feed. I decided to take the clamp off just to give all the room if it decided to slide. So now I gotta get the uh, uh, spring clamp just wrapped around it and back connected to itself to tighten up. All right, I'm breathing heavy again. <laughs> I I think, in the, I don't ask for a lot of comments on the videos. If you do, you know, that's great. Hopefully they're productive and you know, not somebody's just slamming everything or something. But, um, don't really ask for subscribes or stuff like that. If you do, you know, like if you want to, you will. Um, but I just got to this stage and it's those decision points that I will summarize at the beginning of the video, hopefully. But so I just wrestled with this feeding underneath this part and actually following the entire track down in the original tracing of where that line went. And oh my goodness, this is nothing uh, against the manufacturer of this because they're trying to replace uh, a fix for Ford who engineered this. So let's put it all on Ford's shoulders. But man, I got it fed and almost all the way around. And then what I realized is at the end, once this is below that, it's putting a crimp in about in here. And that's going to limit the flow to the heater core. It's just dumb. Um, so I just pulled it out. I'm going to go ahead and do a route that's going to go behind this portion here. I'll have to go over top of the connection for the air intake that's coming into this first stage turbo. And then it's going to go under and back over to the heater core over here. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I have seen some other videos where some other routes were taken through here and there was an issue with touching the serpentine belt and the pulley here. Well, that was going to be simple. I was just going to wire tie it back a couple times to this to keep it away from it. But I just don't like the crimp that it's putting on this down here as it tries to turn. Now, if this had a 90 degree barb coming out of that piece, or if I put in a 90 degree, I think it would be fine and it would follow the track. And believe me, it's inching one or two inches here pulling there, pushing there, pushing, because it's so much resistance against so many things with the silicone hose. I was wrestling it. Um, all right, so we are basically on. The hose is connected from end to end, and this is after I decided that the original route underneath everything and all that was just not working, um, moving on from that. So it's going to come up, so I've got to get the air breather filter. Uh... Uh, all the air pipes, everything like that in place. And then I'll see how I'm going to attach it from there. But uh, it is connected back there. It is connected on near the water pump here. And it was so tight from this uh, block off fitting to the silicone hose. That fitting would not even get past that bending it over and pushing with the screwdriver. That's how tight that is on that. 
So I had to get it together, wrap it around it, get it started again, which was a little bit of a pain, but it's tight, it's snug. And I'm just gonna start getting the air breather filter. I've already hooked up the electrical again, um, locked off all the little ports. I'll just have to remember to do this for the fan clutch connection there. That'll go right underneath there. Um, let me get the air intake uh, filter and all that stuff kind of in place and we'll see what we'll do with the end part of this. All right, some good news. Um, the, the hose is all the way in. Obviously, that's not where it's staying. I'm just going to have to figure out the securing, where I'm going to wire tie it, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I just thought, well, I need to go ahead and do a pressure test. Let's make sure we've got sealing in the whole system now and not something else. Um, so I got it up to just above five. And with this small pump, uh, my gosh, it took it forever to get there. But it's been almost a half an hour and it hadn't moved. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting coolant in it and see if it'll less, be less volume then. And then I can do a, uh, another pressure test with it. And... Let's see if this works fine. All right, we are to a refilling stage. Um, hope this light doesn't really affect it too bad for video, but we're hooked up. Um, I've explained this before, area and Venturi closed off. I'm gonna pull a vacuum, open that, create a negative pressure in the system, and then I'm gonna shut that off, and then that vacuum will be filled by the coolant but i'm already frustrated because i've spent a few minutes just trying to stabilize the daggum ladder <laughs> uh to be up here i've got to have something to sit this on and it's a gravel area underneath the shop and daggum it just makes it so much harder when you don't have concrete or a flat space but i'm gonna move on with getting this good so let's start all right so we're pulling the venturi right now we're not actually creating the venturi because this is closed this time i've wire tied everything it's probably going to spray on the side of the truck but we'll wash it later but let's go ahead and uh this is closed so nothing's going to draw from there but we're going to create a, a vacuum in the system let's see what this does Slowly moving, pulling a vacuum, which is a good sign because if we had a leak from all the work, it would not pull a vacuum and hold it. This is a big system, and actually I have drained stuff out of the heater core once I did the last work with the hose. So there's a lot out of here, so there's actually a lot of cubic inches uh, that is gone, so I want to see if we'll get up to 15 and see where it goes. We may just go to this next mark on the left on the uh, inside, and we're starting to lose pressure. Well, well just because the compressor kicked in, but let's go ahead and fill a little bit. No, it's still going. Yeah, we're building pressure, so let, we're going to go to negative 15. And we know that 14.7 PSI is the atmospheric pressure at sea level. I'm up at like 2220, and you can always play with things like, well, what, what are we really pulling right now? But uh, we're pulling a pretty good vacuum. So let's shut that off. Then I'm going to open this up. It's holding it. It's actually staying right where I want it to be. And then I'm going to open this up, and hopefully it should pull coolant through that line. And it definitely was instant. We can shut off the flow from the compressor because it was just bypassing at that point. It's probably going to fill this whole gallon of material and I'm just going to keep doing this for a little bit and we'll see where we're at. All right, so I stopped for a second, um, almost on the second gallon. And I think I could have pulled it, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to pull a little more vacuum. But I want to show you something just to make sure you see the results that are happening. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, this is shut off now. I'm going to increase the Venturi. 
from the compressed air line. This is shut off, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull some more vacuum on the system on the truck. I want you to see the needle jumping. When you see that needle jumping, it isn't because of just sudden changes in atmospheric pressure, but it is because you're pulling bubbles back out when I draw on this system down through here. So what I've already put in with one gallon, it's pulling bubbles past that, and you'll see those starting to stabilize, which is a good sign. We're getting more air out of air traps. So one of the things I'm already noticing is this air intake right here, if I don't put a, a, a spring clamp around that or something, I'm actually even drawing air in around that. That's how powerful this vacuum is, even when it's low. So when I bump up in the uh, gauge up here, um, any kind of fitting along the way is affecting just how long this is going to take to do. So in comparison, it is um, still around 33, 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and my mouth is still a bit frozen and just came out of the cab. And thank goodness we have heat. Uh, so let's focus in on the temperature. It's not quite warmed up yet, but we're good. Well, we're at the end. Um, I've secured it here for this hose everything else it's not touching anything I think pretty good turns but I've ran uh, several miles uh, up to temperature several times and everything's good fluid stayed well heating's good heat works inside uh, everything's fine so this is pretty much over uh, the only thing <laughs> happened since I went for put the hood down to go for the really the first test drive is this strut on this side when I went to pull down the hood it snapped off at the bottom it's just it was open so long uh, so I had to replace that and the last part of running the hose uh, up here uh, sweat, however I did it I caught the uh, windshield wiper or the uh, washer fluid little nozzle there and it broke that so I've got a kit to replace that now <laughs> keep breaking things while I'm working on other things but hey it was a good project and it's running great hopefully it'll keep running good for a while have a blessed day and stay patient when you work on it.